Hey there, folks. Uh, so I just got some uh, samples in the mail from Funny Playing, and well, I get to show them off. Um, so what I've got here is something that I have been talking about in in at least a couple videos that I know of. I've, I've mentioned it in some Discord servers too, but it, it's been kind of hush hush. Um, they haven't really teased it, and I haven't really like you know gone out on Twitter and announced it. But I guess I'm doing that now on uh, YouTube. Uh, anyway. Funny Playing made their own uh, cart flasher, a portable cart flasher. Now, this specific one is a prototype, and so it is not as portable as it could be. Um, there's just no battery installed. I don't, I don't know if they have the batteries finalized yet um, or not. Um, you know, may, maybe it's all final, but they, they shipped a few other things. We'll get to those eventually, trust me. Um, there's some good stuff in there. Anyway, um, maybe they just shipped it without a battery just to make shipping easier. I don't know. Either way, not too big a deal. I can remedy that. Um, but even still, it does work without a battery, so let's try it out. Uh, we'll run through a few of the basic functions of it, and um, then we'll get all up in its guts and uh, see if I can't get a battery installed. Uh, so first things first, it does not come with but you do need to provide and install a micro SD card. If you try and use this thing without a micro SD card, it just complains that there's no micro SD card. Uh, because how this thing works, regular cart flashers that we all know and love, like for example, the GBX cart, uh, you plug this bad boy into your computer and then you read and write your carts uh, to your computer directly. There we go. Just like that. Plug it in, use the software. Pretty easy to use, pretty intuitive, um, especially with the new Flash GBX software, but that's for another time. This, on the other hand, is a little bit different. The idea is that it reads and writes to the micro SD card instead of to your computer. Um, now, if you're looking at this going, well, what the heck's the point of that? Well, then this thing really isn't for you. Um, I totally understand that it's a, a very niche use case, but, you know, if you have something like this, it is really neat. Um, before we get into this, I do want to go over a, uh, do a brief history lesson because I know this is going to come up. I know it is. Um, so let's just get ahead of that. I have done videos on this before. I don't think I did a video on the assembly of this thing. Uh, but I have done a video on the hardware derivative of it that I made and assembly of that, at least two different versions. Um, anyway, this is a, an older version of Sani's open source cart reader. So this particular one is hardware three and I think they're up to like hardware five or something. Um, but Really, the only difference between the hardware versions is the form factor of the unit itself uh, and the amount of carts that it supports. Uh, so this particular version, like I said, it's hardware version 3. You have a Super Nintendo slot. Um, I believe this is a Genesis, Sega Genesis slot, and then a Nintendo 64 slot on top. And then on front, you have a um, Game Boy cart slot, or I guess on the bottom there. Uh, I have made several modifications to this thing, including adding better buttons. I like these a lot better. They work. And in fact, this was actually the basis of the modded version that I made here. Um, this is, of course, that prototype. I can't find the one that I like using. I, si I put it aside somewhere. I'm in the middle of a move. Well, I'm preparing to move, which really means nothing's packed yet, but I have everything out in a pile in my living room and I'm sorting it, and I guarantee you that cart reader is in one of the bins. I just don't know where. Clearly I didn't sort it in the right space um, because it's not with the rest of the cart readers. Anyway, uh, so that other one looks a little bit something like this. Of course I have a blank board. Um, it is basically the exact same form factor as this one, except this one has the flash reader add-on card instead of the... It was here. Oh! Oh, I set it aside. 
instead of the uh, Game Boy add-on. Uh, so this would just go on the back here instead of this red board, and then there would be a um, Game Boy cart reader on there, much like this one. Um, nice, small, compact, uh, but most importantly, in my opinion, portable except this one doesn't work because I just pulled the SD card out of it. Uh, but the reason I'm talking about these is because Funny Playing's cart reader is based very, very heavily off of the open source Sani cart reader. Um, so the hardware is totally, totally, totally different, uh, but the software is largely the same. They have made some modifications to account for having six buttons instead of two. Um, and they've stripped out just about all of the functionality for um, the other systems there. Um, oh, by the way, this thing also supports N64 memory cards. You just plug a controller in there and then plug the memory card into the controller. Super neat. Love it. But, you know, obviously it's a little bit of a bear to build. I have mine modified with a battery gauge too because it kept dying on me. Anyway, that's besides the point. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of resources on this thing out there, just probably not my specific horrifying amalgam of um, built. God, that's not even that's not even straight. I need to fix that, but whatever. It's neat. I like it. It works exactly like you'd expect. Um, Hardware-wise, or functionally, these are pretty much the same. Uh, oh, ah, we don't need to do that. So anyway, this bad boy, um, it has a plastic injection molded case. On the back there you have some uh, information about what it is. Portable cart flasher from Funny Playing. Uh, I guess that's a model number, FPF001, excuse me, FPF-001 input, five volt DC at one amp. Uh, I don't know how well that's coming out on camera because it's embossed into the plastic there. Uh, capacity 800 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts. Uh, so it looks like they have already figured out what battery they want to use. This one just literally doesn't have a battery in there. Uh, and then at the bottom here, Retro Pixel 2022 collection, all rights reserved, made in China. Power off before removing or inserting the cart. That is important. This thing does not support hot swap. Um, if you insert and remove carts while the thing is powered, there there is a, a very decent chance that you can wipe the save on um, like Game Boy carts specifically. Not so much Game Boy Advance, but Game Boy. Um, on the right here, we have a little icon for an SD card. It's just showing you the orientation that it gets inserted. See the little graphic matches there. Uh, the cutout is very, very precise. It's actually, uh, it's actually very well done, I think. Um, if you are the type that doesn't really have fingernails, you're going to have a hard time with it, but realistically, you only have to insert the SD card once unless you want to move data to and from it, so not too big a deal. Um, and then on the left here, we have the mode switch. Uh, so the bottom most position is off, and then we have 3.3 volts for Game Boy Advance and 5 volts for Game Boy Color. And it says that right on the back there as well. So you have off, GBA, 3 volt, and then GB, GBC, 5 volt. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this off. I'm going to insert my um, Game Boy Color cart. Uh, do keep in mind, this particular one does not have any of the chamfers on the cart slot. Uh, so make sure you have it inserted the right way around. Um, it's not going to hurt your cart or anything to insert it backwards like this, but it means the pins will be on the wrong side, so it won't be able to read it. So make sure you got that the right, right way around. We'll hit five volts there, and then we're brought to the main menu where we have the title, Portable Cart Flasher, which was probably just edited from the stock firmware that said Open Source Cart Flasher. And then we have two options, Game Boy and About. They stripped out all of the other functions there. Uh, so let's start with the About screen. You can see this particular one is on firmware 1.04. I don't know specifically what that means um, because that doesn't align with the uh, SANI firmware. 
um, but it's dated 2023, February, February 2023, so a few months ago. They were still tweaking it, it seems. And ORZ Studio, that is the hardware manufacturer uh, that Funny Playing contracts for all of their um, hardware. <laughs> um, and it says press OK button. OK button is this right one. Uh, none of the buttons are labeled, but if this was a Game Boy Pocket, it would be the A button. Uh, the other buttons don't do anything. Whenever it wants an OK button press, that's what that is. Uh, we've got two LEDs here. Uh, the top one is the charge LED, which is kind of wigging out on us because there's no battery in there, so it's not actually charging. The bottom one is the uh, activity LED, so you'll see that light up in just a moment here. And they are actually kind of sort of labeled on the plastic if I switch that off and uh, unplug it. You can probably see that a little bit better. There's a little like almost recycle symbol, not recycle, but like two arrows circling each other and then the standard power thing. Um, I'm assuming that's a charge icon, not just power icon because it's off, but it comes on when I plug it in. Anyway, let's go back up to five volts. You go to Game Boy. It only gives you the one option there. It says select Game Boy type, Game Boy color. Um, I'm not so I'm not sure why he didn't skip this menu since he has it set to detect. Uh, if I were to uh, turn this off again, remove that, set this to three volts, we got the same menu options, Game Boy and About, and then if we hit Game Boy, you see I have the one option again, but this time it's Game Boy Advance instead of Game Boy Color. And the B button, as it were, would go back to the previous menu and you can go up and down. Um, I don't know what left and right do because the menus in this thing don't really have left and right, uh, but I don't know, maybe it lets us skip through pages. We'll find out. The SD card that I'm using on this thing, um, I pulled straight out of my other flasher, so it already has plenty of ROMs and saves on it uh, from all the carts that I've dumped. Um, but we'll just dump this one again. Go to Game Boy, Game Boy Color. You can see it reads the info off the cart. It detects it as Pokemon Silver. It gives me some information about the hardware itself. Uh, mapper type MBC3, which is correct because this is a real-time clock cart. ROM size is two megabytes. It's not reading that off the cart. It's reading that off of an internal database because all it's doing is reading the header. The header says this is Pokemon Silver, and then this thing goes and says, hey, how big is Pokemon Silver? Oh, it's two megabytes. Uh, same thing with banks, uh, SRAM size, and checksum. Uh, the checksum, I believe it does actually read off the cart. It'll tell you if that's invalid, if it can't read the cart. Um, so press button. B button doesn't seem to do anything, nor do the D-pad, but A brings us to the next menu. Uh, the default is flash GBC cart, which doesn't do anything for this thing because this cart is not reflashable. Uh, but the other, the next three options are what we're going to be interested in. Read ROM, uh, that's going to let us dump the ROM from the cart to the micro SD card. Read save, same thing but for saves. Write save lets us pull a save from the SD card and put it on the uh, cart. Uh, this last option here, NPower GB memory. We'll get to that later, but the, that is specific to one cart. If you do not have a Nintendo Power GB cart, this option doesn't do anything for you. Uh, I have not tested this specific cart reader, but on the SANI version of this cart reader, it works pretty much as you'd expect. Um, let you read the uh, ROMs off there, write new ROMs to it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, let's go and read the ROM to the SD card. Uh, for context, a GBX cart can do this in about 15 seconds for this specific cart. I've dumped this one many times. And I wasn't keeping track. You'll probably know better than me since you have that YouTube timeline down there, but that felt pretty darn quick. Press OK button. Uh, and then it resets. It just loops back to the beginning of that menu where it reads all the cart information again. And then we go to this menu. I'm gonna go ahead and read the save as well. 
it automatically saves to the structure. I kind of skipped through that last time around, but you could, if you were to plug this SD card into a computer, you'll see a GB folder. Inside, there will be ROMs and saves, and inside the save folder, we'll have Pokemon Silver, that little arrow. Um, I think that's for spaces. I don't know why there's an arrow instead of spaces. And then it automatically dumps it into that one folder. So if I were to go and do this again, read save, you see it automatically appends and now it's dumped into the two folder. So we can dump as many times as we want and it never over, oh, I didn't mean to do it a third time. <laughs> uh, I meant to go to write save. And here we go, now we're in the menu and oh yeah, left and right do actually skip through the menu, kind of like the uh, EverDrive menu where it just goes to the next page. Uh, so we'll go to the GB folder you see ROM and save there. Um, there's some other saves that I've dumped. I'm gonna go ahead and flash this Pokemon Crystal save to it just to see what happens. Oh, error did not verify. That's unfortunate. That save might not be valid though, so. I'm just gonna write the Pokemon Silver save back to it because that one wasn't gonna work anyway. Ooh, error did not verify. Uh-oh. Oh, now it says Yokimon. Um, that's not right. Let's reseed it. Prototypes, am I right? Okay, that's appearing like it should. Let's right save. Verified, okay, there we go. So, sometimes you just need to reseat the carts. It happens, it is what it is. All right, so now, um, that's pretty much it. That's all we can really do with OEM carts, but in my opinion, that's all you really need to do with OEM carts. Uh, I've also got a stupid cheap bootleg. Um, I don't even know if this thing works. I literally use this thing as an ice scraper in the winter. <laughs> Let's find out. There you go, Pokemon Red. I'm not gonna dump this one because that is not, um, this is not gonna be a OEM ROM. It's gonna be modified to save to the flash. Uh, but I might be able to flash it. So I'm gonna go up here to flash GBC cart. It reads that again. Unfortunately, it does not auto detect, uh, but here are the options we have. Flash cart, flash cart and save. 29F cart MBC3, 29F cart MBC5, 29F cart cam. So this bottom one, the 29F cart cam, that is actually for HDR's custom Game Boy camera carts. Um, I haven't tested it because I haven't actually built one yet. Mm, I'll get to it eventually, I swear. Um, 29F cart MBC3 and uh, MBC5 for that matter should be the, uh, oh no, it's not where I thought it was. One moment. All right, blessing in disguise because I was able to go grab some of the other carts I need. Um, really? I just had it in my hand. Never mind, I didn't grab all the carts I need. Never mind, I'm just an idiot. It was literally in my hand. <laughs> anyway, 29F cart would be for something like this. Um, these are the MBC3 flash carts with real-time clock that Retro Game Repair Shop sells. I'm not gonna try flashing this one because this one is actually a um, newly assembled retail one that I need to ship off to RGRS. Uh, but I've got another one here that is basically the same hardware-wise, just different PCB that we can try flashing and um, see what happens. We're just gonna hot swap it because I don't care if it wipes. Uh, so 29F cart, MBC3. Uh, might fail, might have to reboot it, probably won't, but we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and flash Pokemon Silver to it. And this might take a bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that down. Um, for context, GBX cart can do this in about two minutes. I expect this to take probably eight to 10. Uh, so in the meantime, I can go ahead and talk about something else. And once I run out of things to talk about, I'll pause and let that finish. Um, so this is the N-Power GB Flash cart that the menu refers to. 
Um, these things are actually really neat. They are flashcards made and sold by Nintendo only in Japan. Uh, if you, uh oh, good lord, why is that so stiff? So if you buy one of these, it probably comes with any number of ROMs on it. Mine had three ROMs in particular. I never bothered to reflash it or change that out. Um, they're all right. The idea was you buy the hardware and then they had kiosks set up uh, where you can, oh, I tapped the Game Boy and it must have lost connection to the cart. Um, you have the kiosk set up. You just plug your cart in. You say, hey, I want this game and then the kiosk adds that game to your cart if you have enough room. Uh, I don't know if yet, I assume you had to pay for the games, but I genuinely don't know. I mean, maybe paying for the cart was enough. Who knows? Uh, but it's a multi-cart flash cart uh, from Nintendo. Genuinely really neat. Um, also quite overpriced if you want to grab one. Um, if you want to grab one just to like use as a flash cart, do not recommend. There are much better options in the aftermarket these days. Uh, but if you want to grab one just for the collection, I mean, they're they're neat. Um, this is why I never reflashed mine because I like puzzle puzzle bobble. Um, but anyway, moving on. Neat stuff. Um, it works exactly like you'd expect, but uh, you do need to generate the ROM and uh, the ROM pack and map file. Uh, for reflashing something like this is a little bit easier on the GBX cart than it is on here, but it works basically the same. Um, forgive me, I don't want to demo it because I don't want to wipe this thing. Um, next up, the AM29F option should also work on the MBC30 flash carts. Uh, just select MBC3 and ignore the MBC30, uh, and then you can right to something like this. I've done videos on these bad boys too. Uh, it should also work if you used a four megabyte chip instead of two, um, you, but only on MBC30, not MBC3. MBC3 only supports two megabytes. And then this last one here, um, I'm not gonna pull it apart because you know the, the board pictures are gonna be basically meaningless, but this is a four megabyte MBC5 flash card. Uh, four megabytes is handy because we can put extra large memes on them. <laughs> uh, oh, that's so tight. I need to fix that. Okay. Anyway, this thing flashed, verified successful. A-OK. -okay. That took way less than the time I had anticipated. Uh, resets back to the main menu instead of the um, Game Boy menu loop. Uh, but you see it's reading from the cart. Now it sees Pokemon Silver. Let's go ahead and write the save as well. GB save, Pokemon Silver. Verified okay, excellent. Uh, so one of the things with these carts is, go and power that off and pull that out. Uh, these bad boys use FRAM instead of SRAM. Uh, and because it's using FRAM, I don't have to have a battery in there to retain save data. The battery is required for the real-time clock, however, but, you know, details. It is what it is. Pull that off. And before I demo that, let's get started on this bad boy. I'm gonna go ahead and dump it first. You can see it shows up as GBVP2 because that is the uh, software that was used to create this ROM. I don't know that I have a backup of the ROM, so we're gonna dump it <laughs> before I overwrite it. Um, Pokemon Silver, I just dumped that. As you can see, my save game, um, Mako 4731 1632, and I am there. Some matches, excellent. So now let's try flashing it. I'm gonna select 29F cart MBC5. And 
I think I have a four megabyte game in here somewhere. Ooh, Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets is four megabytes. Let's flash that. All right, and let's check to make sure that this one flashed all right while that's going. This one's gonna take even longer than the first one. Uh, it should move at the same speed, it's just a four megabyte card instead of two. Uh, so time not set, yeah, it is what it is. Um, there's no battery in there, so that's why that's happening. GBX cart can actually interface with the MBC3 chip and change the registers to set the time. We don't have that option here. Um, but it's just going to bug me to set the time. I'm just going to say that because it's going to reset the second I power it off anyway. But you see them in the same area. Oh, I forgot about that start button too. Um, but Mako, 4731. 16 badges and 32 Pokédex. I clearly didn't do very good on completing the Pokédex, but as you can see, it flashes just fine. Pretty neat stuff. Um, otherwise, I think that's about it. The only other thing I want to touch on are Game Boy Advance stuff, but I'm gonna pause and let that finish writing for a moment, so I will be right back. All right, so this thing finished flashing. Let's go ahead and, uh, and it verified, all right. Uh, so I didn't bother flashing a save because I don't actually have a save for uh, the Harry Potter game that I just flashed to it, um, but shouldn't matter. Uh-oh. Ah, that's unfortunate. That does happen sometimes. Um, like I said earlier, sometimes you just gotta reseat and try again. Um, could also just be that my Game Boy doesn't work as well as I thought it did. Let's try another Game Boy, just in case. As he uh, throws his Game Boy on the floor. This is a Game Boy Color game, but and this is a Game Boy Pocket, but yeah, there it goes. So it's working. It's just a Game Boy problem, it seems. Yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, last thing I wanted to show off, let me get a um, working Game Boy. Before moving on to Game Boy Advance stuff, I wanted to discuss the Funny Playing Flash Cart, which is also not out yet. Uh, but the reason this cart is not out yet is because Funny Playing was waiting until this thing was done so they could drop both at the same time so you have a, a way to flash this thing without having to rely on a third party, um, that was weird. Okay. I don't know what I did those first two times, but it did not go in right. I flashed the Infinity demo to this thing, uh, just so that it has a game on there that's not Pokemon Silver. Um, I know I have more games on my SD card, but not all of them are valid dumps, and as far as I can tell, there's no way to delete them on the device itself, and I just haven't gone through through everything to delete them yet. Uh, so boot that up, and we're going to flash Pokemon Silver to it. You see it recognizes as Infinity. Um, hmm. I didn't think that would be... Oh, you know what? It's not pulling this information from a database. I'm sorry. That's Game Boy Advance. All of this information should be in the header of the game itself. So it is reading that off the cart. I'm sorry. I gave bad information. Uh, let's go ahead and flash this. I believe we can just hit flash cart. Uh, what did I go into? GB, ROM. Oh, I just have more ROMs than I remember. Let's flash Pokemon Silver to it. Yeah, okay, that was the right option. Um, I wish it were labeled better because that's kind of ambiguous, but now that I know and now that you know, I guess it's not really an issue. Uh, but we'll let that flash. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some Game Boy Advance stuff at the same time. Um, Game Boy, this also supports Game Boy Advance. It works the exact same way. I'm not going to go through uh, reading and writing these things. 
Um, because they take a lot longer. I think the speed itself is about the same, but this is flashing a 2 megabyte ROM. This is a 16 megabyte ROM. Uh, a little bit longer, but you can of course read and write to Game Boy Advance carts the exact same way that you can Game Boy Color carts on this reader. Uh, with some exceptions, um, there are fewer flash carts supported just because there are fewer Game Boy Advance carts out there uh, that support flashing. Um, that being said, this thing does support, or it should support, excuse me, I don't know if it still does, I don't know if that's one of the things Funny Playing stripped out, but the original open source cart reader does support writing to some bootleg carts. So potentially this Pokemon Red cart I might be able to write to um, with the other open source cart reader. I haven't tried it with this one. Uh, that's that's something I'll have to try out later. I actually need this for testing something else. Now that I know it works, I want to try it on a, a, a different sample that I received today um, because I think that might be a good test. Uh, but that's for another video for another time. Um, after I try it on that thing, I'll try flashing it on this thing and I'll uh, update the comment, the description there. Okay, so did not verify. So here's how we're going to take care of that. We're just going to start over. And it says Pokemon Silver. So maybe it flashed enough. GB ROM. Almost flashed Pac Man thinking it was Pokemon. Alright, try that again. Maybe it'll work better this time. The uh, cart slot cover is actually a pretty nice stand, I think. Puts it at a decent angle, it's not putting any pressure on the cord. Even though if it was, this thing weighs... Let's find out, actually. Um, I think it's frozen again because it's still at 7%. But with my cable plugged in, this thing measures in, no battery, at 86 grams or 3 ounces. Oh, there we go. Alright. Third tries the charm. There, now it got past 7%. Uh, unfortunately, cart readers are very temperamental. It's not just this thing that has these sort of problems. Um, GBX cart has it too. I'm actually about to replace the cart reader on this one because it's given me problems more and more frequently. Maybe that'll help out. Um, it's these aftermarket cart readers. These aren't out of anything. They are just manufactured. Uh, they are designed similarly to the Game Boy Advance SP cart readers. Um, and I believe they're actually drop-in compatible, but the Game Boy Advance ones have these corners chopped off. Otherwise, they're largely the same. Uh, but unfortunately, that's just kind of how they go. Uh, cart readers are a little bit more sensitive than Game Boys to... Um, any electrical interference on this sort of thing. So unfortunately that's just how it goes. Anyway, we'll let that flash. While that's going, like I said, Game Boy Advance works the same way, including Funny Playing's Game Boy Advance cart. Huh? Huh? Uh, so this is, of course, a um, sample as well. I doubt the uh, Retail ones are going to be programmable V0.01, but they work pretty much as you'd expect, uh, just like any other Game Boy Advance flash cart. Put a ROM on it, plug it into your Game Boy, Bob Gianti. This one has uh, King of Fighters, I think, flash to it. I guess this is the ROM that Funny Playing uses for testing. I don't know, I haven't tried reflashing it yet.
Yeah, King of Fighters EX. Neo Blood. I've never been into fighting games, especially on handhelds, but... Ta-da! I don't even know how to play this game. I'm not gonna embarrass myself. Okay. This time it verified successful. Everything is good. Uh, 151 seconds. What is that? Like two and a half minutes, give or take. So it's a little bit slower than a GBX cart, but surprisingly not that slow. This is actually quite a bit faster than the one that I made. I guess that makes sense. This thing uses an AT Mega 2560, whereas this is using a uh, GD something or other. I don't know. But either way, that flashed. Let's go into Game Boy Color again. You see it recognizes just fine. I'm going to go ahead and write save. GB save Pokemon Silva. Verify it okay. Fire that off. I'll insert that there. I like that the Game Boy Advance carts sit nice and flush and you can close that if you want, but unfortunately they're kind of a pain in the butt to get out because you can't really get your finger in there at a good angle. But I don't know. Feedback for uh, future improvement, I guess. Uh, oh, it did not read. I don't know why it's not reading. You saw it, it just worked. Hmm, I bet I know what it is. These cart readers are slightly offset. Oh, dang, that wasn't it. Okay. Uh, or did I get the wrong side? I find that it works if you try and push it all the way over to, the, to one side. At least that was a solution to um, one of my prototype cart readers not reading. Yeah, that's not working. This is what it is. Prototypes, am I right? As you can see, the other one flashed just fine, save included. All is well. That touch sensor is still giving me problems, and this is why the retail slates don't have touch sensors. <laughs> um, anyway, tangent. Moving on. So I don't know if I'm going to get to be able to read that one, but it should work with my Pokemon game. Yeah, it reads that just fine, uh, though there is a little bit of a glitch with the name. I'm going to power cycle and reseat just in case. Game Boy Advance is pulling from a database, so it should just be reading the header and then pulling everything from internal memory. But. Let's read that ROM. Oh, that's not too bad. That's actually reasonably quick. All right, so I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but I'm gonna mention it again. This is a prototype. It is not done. Uh, I don't know what else they have to do to it. Um, Judging by the plastic injection molded shell in this color with this texture, I'm guessing the shell is pretty much final. Um, the hardware on the inside, however, I have seen several iterations to this thing, uh, each one looking quite a bit different. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what else they're planning on doing. I think that's about it though. Let's wait for that to write. 
and then we'll go ahead and get up in its guts and see if we can't add a battery. So there you go, dump just fine, save to my micro SD card, validate a checksum, all is well. I'm gonna go ahead and dump my save as well while I'm here. Looks like it reads it twice, interesting. Um, flash GBA card. Yeah, it doesn't like that one. With Game Boy Advance cards, it doesn't make you choose the flash type. It tries and detects detect what flash chip it has. And this thing just won't read in here. I don't know if it's a cartridge issue or a reader issue. I'll have to I'll have to look into that more. Both of these arrived in the same package. I got both of them today, so I haven't tried flashing it with anything else yet either. But anyway, moving on. That's enough of that. Let's tear it apart. This particular one has four tri-wing screws. I'm not sure if that's because that's what they're going with or if that's because whoever assembled this, that's what they had on their desk. I'm gonna assume that's what they're going with because I know Funny Playing has a lot of tri-point, not tri-wing, excuse me. I know Funny Playing has a lot of these screws given that they also make Game Boy shells and the screws for them. But four screws, back comes off, and that is very prototype looking. That is Flux City. Um, so it looks like quite a few parts of this thing were hand soldered. Oh, and we have a different screw type on the inside, just, just like a real Game Boy. Just like a real Game Boy, I grabbed the wrong size. Probably remove that. And is that... Ooh, that is. That is a Game Boy Pocket power switch, so you could just swap that out with whatever you want. Um, whatever you want Game Boy Pocket-wise. Uh, the board doesn't want to come out because it's hitting these clips for the uh, cover, but you can just flip that up. Just kind of flex the plastic out of the way. I'm going to leave the screen seated in the shell because I have no idea how it's actually attached. Maybe, there we go. Interesting. And those certainly look like Game Boy Pocket membranes and buttons. So, I wager you can replace the buttons in this if you want. You could, heck, you could probably put uh, retro CNC buttons in there if you want. Maybe I'll do that. These are GBA buttons, so they won't fit, but... Huh? Huh? Oh, this is 3D printed, so th yeah, this is definitely still a prototype. <laughs> I sincerely doubt they're going to be 3D printing brackets for this thing. Alright, here we go. The brains of the operation. This chip right here. Let's see if I can get that to pick up. There we go. GD32F103. There's a lot of things using this microprocessor these days. Giga Devices is uh, getting around. Uh, but anyway, Funny Playing ported the firmware from the AT Mega chip to this GD32 chip. Um, I don't know if there is a way to update the firmware after the fact. I believe they've said it can update over the micro SD. I have no idea how that's going to work. I have zero details on that. Boy, the soldering on that is not great. Yeah, it is what it is. It's good enough. Uh, looks like the battery input is perhaps fused. 
Or is that a really big resistor? I can't tell. Um, I don't know what all this stuff is, but I'm guessing it's components for the power supply and the power switching, because I don't know that you need that much else for this thing. It's pretty simple electronically. The uh, battery connector is that uh, same battery connector that Funny Playing uses for their Game Boy Advance battery mod and Game Boy Color battery mods. Uh, one of these bad boys. So you can literally take the battery from one of those and just plug it in if you want. Oops. Pin the same, same connector. The uh, issue here is that I don't have a screen plugged in, but whatever. You, you, you can see the LED lighting up. You get the idea. Uh, but the problem here is that um, this battery physically does not fit in the case. They're expecting one about half the size. Uh, the case said, what, like 800 milliamps, whereas this thing is uh, milliamp hours, whereas this thing is like 2,000. And we got a blue LED for charging. Okay. Anyway, I'm not going to use this battery, uh, and fortunately I don't have one that will fit properly with this connector, um, and I need this for something else, so I'm not splicing that connector off. But, in the uh, spicy drawer here, I'm sure I can find something that will fit. Or maybe not. I think that's the closest we're going to get to fit in. And that is half the size that the casing says it wants. That should be fine. Oh, how about this? Oh, that's a Game Boy Micro battery. That'll fit nicely. I mean, I'm going to have to splice yet another connector onto it, so I don't really want to use... <gasps> Wait a second. What's this? Oh, another funny plane battery. Set that aside. Eh, maybe these things fit. Let's find out. If it does, I think it's going to be tight. Ah, oh, it just barely doesn't fit. That's a darn shame. No, oh, it is what it is. Let me go find another battery that does actually fit because I don't want to use. Eh, screw it. We'll use the we'll use the small one. This is severely underrated for what we're doing, but I think it's gonna be okay. I think that's also a micro connector. So I definitely want to save that. On the plus side, I remember buying this battery, so I know that it can handle. I think this thing said 5 volt, 1 amp input. I know this battery can handle that, or at least it could five years ago when I bought it. <laughs> but, I don't know, seems fine. Is that gonna work though? No, it's not. I need a little bit more wire, because of course I do.
I need to expand both? I guess I don't, but I probably should. Ground isn't fused, so I could just use any ground that I want. So it's really just the positive wire. Let me go grab some heat shrink. I'm only going to do it the one time, so I might as well do it right. I suppose I can use the red wire. Why not? What the frick happened? Eh, nothing. Some brass sponge can't fix. Pretty short wire after all. I don't have much to work with, but that should be okay. gonna have that sitting just about there so I want my wire and just pull that down and down to about there and I'm gonna add a little bit of slack because I'm trying to plan ahead Instead of trying to solder to the back of that connector, I'll just solder right to the back of that big component. Should be fine, right? I'll just like double stick it down or something. Double sided tape. And then this bad boy. <laughs> that one needs some slack too. Really does.
Like I said, I'm only doing it the one time. Might as well do it right. If you don't have time now, when will you? Though I definitely should have prepped the other wire before soldering down this one. joint is not NASA approved, but this thing is not going into space, and it is not mission critical in any way. So I think we're still going to be alright. Hot air station is only set to like 240 right now, so it's really not getting that hot. Just, just hot enough to deal with heat shrink. in this thing. I think I'll tack it down right to the back of the USB-C port. That's relatively inconspicuous. Let's see if this battery's dead. Hey, it's not. Cool. That is definitely not the recommended way to do that, but um, I don't have the battery that it needs, so I'm just gonna work with what I got. I'm thinking I'm also not gonna tape it down or anything. Maybe I'll dump some foam in the case. Kind of keep it in place. You know what? Does this come out? I bet it does. Oh wow, that is. That is very, very tiny. Uh, so that goes like that. I kind of like that funny playing said to heck with those. OLED 4-pin modules, I'm just gonna run the screen directly into the thing. So I guess that's what a lot of the other components are. Hey, it's working. Cool. Uh, shoot. I wasn't paying attention. I think that goes that way. It's got a... never mind. Don't forget the light pipe. Can you get the Jesus thing in? Alright, and I've already totally forgotten what screws go where. So that probably goes there. That probably goes there. And 
this last one perhaps goes here. Weird place for that last screw, but all right. There's a little, uh, there's little ridges in the rear housing that hold the battery in place nicely. That is, it fits, but it's a lot closer than I thought it would be. Like it's right up against the, the panel. It's flush, but it's touching. Good, the screw holes are plenty long. I was worried about that long screw poking through and giving it a uh, pokey, as they say. So there you go. I've already totally forgotten exactly what Giga Device MCU is in there, but you've got the MCU, um, some diodes and transistors and stuff for the um, OLED screen and the button inputs, and then the voltage regulators for powering the carts and the um, MCU, uh, and then the battery charger it looks like and we already know this thing has power pathing because I've been using it this whole time without a battery in it um, but oh. uh, let's try. Yeah. I'll plug the Nintendo power card into it yeah it doesn't read properly but they never do. You have to go to Nintendo Power GB Memory Menu. Hmm. Maybe it's just not seated properly. If I had a theme for this video, it's... Let's try reseating the cart. Oh, it worked the first time. Oh well, there you go. It's a little bit, um touchy. Hopefully they can get that worked out before these things ship, um, or hopefully my particular unit is just temperamental and that's not reflective of the rest of them, but there you go. Neat stuff. Uh, so this is the cart reader coming out from Funny Playing very soon. Uh, I have absolutely no idea when it's going to be coming out. I have no idea who's going to be carrying them besides Funny Playing. I'm guessing Retro Game Repair Shop's going to have them, uh, at least for a little while. Um, I know they intend on stocking the flash carts at the very least, so probably get the cart flasher too. Um, I have no idea what the price is going to be. I can tell you, looking at the, uh, the, the components involved in this thing, not counting the cost of molds for the plastic injection molded housing, the bill of materials on this thing is probably under ten dollars. Um, and knowing Funny Playing, you know, they'll probably sell wholesale at like thirty or so. So retail probably going to be like forty. Um, I might even be overestimating, but again, total speculation. I don't even know what the price is going to be. Um, Sometimes I know information that I'm not supposed to reveal, but in this case, I just genuinely don't know. I'm, spe I'm speculating. Um, I know they've put a lot of R&D into this thing, but I know they've also not built it from scratch. Uh, I have seen the cart reader they built from scratch. This is a lot better. <laughs> um, 
The other one, it was... For what it was, it was good. It was just... This thing has a lot more history behind it. This thing has years of development. Funny Playing's Cart Reader had weeks of development, so... Yeah. Anyway, that's all I've got. Um, at the time this video goes up, there probably won't be a link to this thing in the description, but if I remember, I will try and go back and add it. Um, I don't know, maybe it's coming out sooner than I think, and um, this video goes out later than I think. Who knows? Um, but check the description for more information. Uh, I do want to thank Funny Playing and Retro Game Repair Shop. Yes, Funny Playing and Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this stuff my way. Um, Funny Playing had originally sent it to Retro Game Repair Shop to forward. Um, well, actually, I don't know. All I know is I got it from Retro Game Repair Shop, but they got it from Funny Playing. Um, but I also got permission to talk about it. So, yeah. Anyway, that's all I've got. Um, I'll get you all next time. I've got four, three. I already. T oh! Quick addendum regarding the Funny Playing Flash Carp. Uh, this is. I'm, I'm guessing they're gonna make several because this one says GBA Cart Light. So they might make another version. I, uh, rumor Mill says perhaps one that uses flash saves uh, and maybe even real-time clocks for something like Pokemon games. This particular one uses FRAM, so it's only going to work with original games that used SRAM um, or games that have been patched to use SRAM. Um, so that's going to apply to basically just EEPROM games. Pokemon games aren't going to work on this thing. Um, but. There's still a lot of good stuff out there that will work on this thing. Uh, anyway, that's all I got. Links in the description. Catch you till next time.